Good morning, my name is Bert Voss. I'm sitting here in a place known as Monkeyland Primate Sanctuary, which is a refuge for primates that were previously in captivity. The sanctuary is situated about 16 kilometers outside Plettenberg Bay in South Africa, also known as the Tsitsikama Rainforest in the Garden Route. Uh, I've been involved with this project for a couple of years and the aim of this is to relocate previously captured monkeys into a nice forested environment. The forest is quite big, in total about 25 hectares or seen in a different way 25 rugby or soccer fields in size. There are more than 550 primates in this forest and uh, this whole forest concept is perfect for the animals to take them back to their roots. All right, here you have the little squirrel monkeys um, with a nice nickname, the piranha of the forest. They are basically preparing for breeding time. This is why these males are so big, they are absolutely bursting with testosterone this time of the year. What they're doing on the forest floor here is search what monkeys, or search for what monkeys should search for. Little grubs in the forest, small insects. They go about this the whole day, and this is the mental stimulation that the forest bring to them. Primates are not supposed to be shoulder pets kept by humans. They deserve a forest. Coming into view now are two of our Capuchin monkeys. The one with the white shoulders, uh, he's our alpha male, uh, known by the name of Claude. If you have a close look at his face and his hairstyle, you'll see that he's got a John Claude van Damme lookalike. Now, he's busy with that female, uh, the reason for that being she's coming in to eat. In winter time, for primates is breeding time. This is the time when your alpha male in the forest starts concentrating on the senior females in his group. Very interesting to see how the alpha male actually manipulates the females until they reach the peak of the cycles. Then the male will turn around and mate them. This is another uh, species that we have in the forest. You can see some of our black howler monkeys. They are of course new world primates from South America as the tail clearly indicates to you in the way that they use it as a fifth hand in the trees to hold on. In this specific species your males are always black and the female howlers are all blondes. Now when the female gives birth her offspring both the sons and the daughters will be blonde in color and then when the boys become teenagers, in other words sexually mature, they turn black like their dads. What you see they're simply playing, interacting in the forest, um, helping to build group scenarios to strengthen ties in the group. That's things that primates that are in captivity miss altogether. They never have this opportunity to strengthen family ties and to build their own family groups. Okay, up there in the high canopy, you'll see that flicking of the tail. They interesting little South American primates, um, or bearded sakis that we have at Monkey Land. See if you can see the shape of the face on these animals. You'll see that they have a nice beard, in both males and females. From there, the name bearded sakis. They basically feed on the move. They roam constantly while they feed. The only time that they basically do not move is for short periods to socialize and groom. 
this makes the sanctuary perfect for them in the sense that the area is so big that they can roam in and constantly move. Alright, there you see some of our black and white ruffed lemurs. Ruffed refers to the white collar that you see around the face there. Interesting, the word lemur comes from the Latin that means spirits of the underworld or spirits of the dead. Of course, all lemurs are endangered. Uh, one of the big problems in Madagascar is the destruction of your rainforest. So there's a lot of important work being done in Madagascar by animal authorities to try and save these lemurs. Tragically, we have lost 75% of our lemur species over the past five, 600 years. Well, if they lose their habitat, the animal just disappears. Our resident ringtail lemurs, the star of the movie Madagascar, which are of course the national animal of Madagascar. The tail that you see on the animal there, all have 13 rings, and their tail serves as a personal identification kit or barcode on the animal. The animals that live here, have the opportunity to build their own hierarchies, the way it operates in nature, not in like a captive environment where we decide for A and B, you should go together. So it's very rewarding when we receive new primates in the park and they get successfully integrated into this forest and scooped up in their social groups the way that they normally live to see how they actually advance from a shoulder pit to a primate that can fit into a hierarchy in its own species. Here are two of our resident langur species that we have in the Monkeyland rainforest. The one in view there with the white Ray-Ban sunglasses and the white lipstick on the mouth, uh, that's of course a spectacled langur. And then further up in the tree on the right hand side, we have a Hahnemann langur. If you look at the Hahnemann's face, you can see uh, the very long eyebrows, which is a feature of your Hahnemann's. Now, if you look at the tail again on both primates, the tail tells you immediately where these animals come from. It is, of course, the old world, uh, Asia, Phuket, Thailand, those areas, uh, and your langurs come from India. Uh, those are the Hanumans, from there the name Hanuman, the Hindu god. People, they hire professional hunters to get hold of the langur babies for them which in some cases are orange in color. So nine out of 10 times, the babies gets injured in the process, and one out of 10 that does survive that fall, once again stimulates the illegal pet trade worldwide. In view now you see a large gibbon they are also known as the singers of the forest and also as the swingers of the forest. This specific species you find in Asia, Thailand, those areas, uh, they are canopy dwellers in nature. Notice the exceptional thick biceps on the animal. They go through the canopy in loops. The feet hangs at the bottom, they don't use that. All movement is done by the arms. Gibbons are interesting in the sense that if they ever walk, they are the only one of the great apes that walk upright like the human. 
Even chimpanzees and gorillas are still on all fours. This area here is known as our vervet playground area. Uh, the primates that you see in view are our resident vervet monkeys, uh, which are of course indigenous to South Africa and also the rest of Africa, anywhere where you find forested areas. Um, they are primates that live in the wild in Southern Africa, and they share the forest in Southern Africa and the rest of Africa with the uh, African Chakma baboon, those are not part of Monkeyland stock. They occur naturally in the forested areas that you find around Monkeyland. Apart from the forested area inside Monkeyland that were for the primates, um, Monkeyland has also developed what you see behind us here, known as the Special Monkey Home, which is a facility that enabled Monkeyland to help people that had primates previously, as for instance pets that were handicapped, that were injured living with a human, to help those people to take these primates from them and to introduce them into our Special Monkey Home, where we keep more handicapped primates Another thing is our generations in the forest inside monkey land. As that grows older, we need to cater for these animals because monkey land does not support the pet trade and we will not sell our older animals off to anybody. Once the animals uh, come into monkey land, they remain here for life. So you can see this facility that we have here as a bit of an old age home for our generations as they get older and also for more handicapped primates, which we cannot relocate into the Monkeyland forest due to the competition in there. So, when you next come and visit this unique sanctuary, come and marvel at the perfect harmony in the forest and the primates that live here. But, tread lightly though, leave no carbon footprint here because there are monkeys, apes and lemurs living here. We, the humans, are merely visitors in their environment.